What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are gonna be back to work on my 1965 Ford Mustang. As you guys see in the previous episode, we went ahead and got the radiator fit up on there. And man, let me tell you, everything lined up perfectly. We did have to do a lot of modifications, which is fine. And now in today's video, we do have a lot of parts going on the car. As you can see, here is the front brake calipers that we got. We also have some rotors and bam, look at all these brake lines. We are actually gonna be focusing on getting the brakes uh, set up in the front because we do already have our brake booster on right here check that out but i think the first thing we are going to start with is finishing up the steering as you guys know we did get the correct uh steering connector right here check that out look how much bigger the splines are than the one that i bought previously and we also have this heim joint right here which we are going to use on our uh, steering rod right there so let's jump into today's video and get some stuff knocked out so the first thing I want to get knocked out on the car is the steering. So what we're going to have to do is remove the steering out of here, the steering column that we installed. This is from the S2000. And check this out. I actually have this adapter right here that fits on here perfectly. It has the same exact splines and then we'll bolt it in there and that will allow us to run a custom steering wheel because we do not want to run the S2000 steering wheel. It's kind of ugly, but this right here is going to be nice. It's a six bolt design, I think or I'm not sure how much bolts it has, but we can run any custom steering wheel we want. So let's go ahead and remove this steering shaft because we are gonna have to swap out this U-joint uh, down here. So the first thing we're gonna do on the steering column is replace this original Honda U-joint with our aftermarket one that we got off eBay. And the reason being for that is we needed this spline right here. As you can see, we have our steering shaft and that fits in there perfectly just like that. And then it bolts on on the side. And then that's the same exact way that the other coupler is gonna fit on right here. This actually goes on the rack and pinion. So check that out. So I think then we'll just have a straight shot directly out of that hole straight to the steering uh, rack. We don't really want too much of an angle. We kind of want to keep it as straight as possible. I know it's going to need a little bit of an angle, but I think we will make it work. So let's go ahead and replace this U-joint right here. So check it out, we got the first test fit up and I did go ahead and just split it from this other section because I had to drill out this center hole right here just to get a better weld right there. And I wanted it to be kind of like factory, as you can see, the rod went all the way through there. And I think it's just gonna be a lot stronger like that. And then we can just weld all around here. And I'm thinking maybe even drilling it out a little bit more and then putting a bolt in here and then also welding it up because this is a pretty critical component. If this thing snaps, uh, you're not gonna have no steering and we could possibly send this thing into a wall which we don't want so let's go ahead and bust out the welder and get this welded up and then we can start test fitting it on the car to start measuring the shaft size Check it out, we got it all nice and welded and honestly, I don't think that's ever gonna break off. It's welded pretty solid and then I also welded in this little hole and it cowled onto the tube. So there we have it. Now all we need to do is let this uh, cool down and we can reassemble it and start mocking it up on our car. So I went ahead and got the U-joint back on there. Unfortunately, I wasn't filming for that part, but check that out. And I did also just let this air dry because I didn't really want to cool it off really fast because we want to still keep the structural of the metal. So now let's go ahead and test fit this back in the car. We might have to do a little bit more trimming because this U-joint is a lot bigger than the other one. So let's go ahead and reinstall it and see what we need to do to it. 
So I got the steering shaft back in position and check that out. I think it's going to line up perfectly. So let's go ahead and lift the car up and we'll put the U-joint on the steering rack and then we can actually start measuring our shaft size. And then maybe we'll have to trim that hole out because when I was measuring it, I think I moved it a little bit too far over, which kind of sucks now that I think about it. But we could also just uh, put some more metal in there, weld it back up if we need to. So let's lift the car up and start measuring our shaft. So we got the car back in the air and now let's grab our coupler and reinstall it on the car. It's gonna go simply up here just like this. And bam, check it out, it slips on there perfectly. Now let's grab the steering shaft and fish it through there so we can make some measurements. So I got the shaft all the way in there and it's actually attached to the coupler on the rack and pinion. Now all we need to do is basically make a nice mark right here and then we can simply slide it on there and I think the steering will be done. So we got our mark right here. Let's go ahead and trim it. I think I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger just to be on the safe side. Although this rod is like pretty cheap. I think I paid like 20 bucks. So let's give this a nice cut. So guys, this is the moment of truth. Let's get this thing in there. Now, hopefully this thing lines up here good because you don't have another shaft. So guys, moment of truth. Let's see what happens when we turn the steering wheel and check that out. We got steering. It goes all the way. It goes pretty smoothly. I think it is rubbing a little bit. I'm going to show you guys that in a second. Uh, check this out right here. You can see it is rubbing the side of this hole. So I kind of did misplace this hole. I should have put it like right here, but I accidentally did that. So we will have to fix that up a little bit. And what we're going to do right now is grab the belt sander and I'm going to sand this out just a little bit more right here, just so we have perfect clearance. And then maybe later we'll just weld this back up once we get the engine out, of course. But guys, there we have it. The steering is on there and it's actually pretty tight. As you can see, it's, it works pretty good. And I'm thinking maybe even later we'll add this heim joint right here. As you can see, this is like a bearing. And it, the cool thing is this shaft will go right through it. Like watch, let me show you guys. And bam, the shaft will go right through it like that. And what that will do is make sure that the, the steering has no play. Absolutely, because we want the stiffest steering we can possibly get. And then we can probably put this time joint maybe like right here somewhere. Maybe build a bracket for it. And then you'll have to just slide the steering shaft in through this bearing. But for now, let's go ahead and grind this out a little bit. So guys, check out how it fits now. It doesn't touch or rub anywhere down there. Check that out. We will have to address the issue with the hole being too big. I think I'll probably just make a little plug and then weld it up, but I think we'll do that later after we get the engine out and getting everything ready for paint. And guys, don't worry about this shaft being right here. As you guys know, we are doing a turbo kit on this car. So the headers are actually gonna come out through here instead of going back that way. So we have a lot more room. We won't really run into any issues with the steering shaft. But now that we have all the steering situated, which is awesome, because I mean, I thought it would be a lot harder than that. But honestly, there wasn't really that much of an issue in lining everything up because it was kind of just a straight shot. Now we're gonna move on to the next task, which is the brakes. So here's our brake rotor and caliper, which you guys seen in the previous episode. And honestly guys, I think this is gonna be enough stopping power for this car. I mean, maybe later in the future, we definitely will do a little bit of upgrading, but for now it's gonna be perfect because we can go ahead and make all the lines, which is what we're gonna do right now. As you can see, we have a lot of brake lines right here. We got our tubing, we got our little tube bender right there. We got both brake lines for the side. And then we also have our brackets that this right here is actually gonna slide over. We will have to drill it out a little bit with the step uh, drill bit. So let's go ahead and get this side all lined up. We'll put the caliper on and the rotor and start figuring out how we're gonna do these lines. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and turn our wheel all the way to the left so that we know exactly how long the brake line needs to be. And there we have it just like that. So check it out, we got our brake line right here and here's actually the bracket that I bought off eBay. These things are actually pretty cool. 
and check this out. I went ahead and used the step drill bit, drilled that out. And now this right here is gonna fit in there perfectly. And it's basically gonna be like an OEM setup, even though it's nowhere near OEM. And then that's just gonna slide on there like that. Might need a little bit of help with the hammer. But check that out guys, we got the bracket on there, the C-clip is in there. And then all we have to do is just literally, uh, probably we'll just probably weld this on to the body somewhere over here. Probably just like that. So let's go ahead and line it up and get these things welded on there. check it out we got the brake line mounted on there and i did make sure to test it going both ways so check it out this is all the way to the left and there's no tightness on the brake line at all and then the same thing where we turn it all the way to the other side same exact thing it's not tight at all which i think this turned out awesome with that no tightness at all either even though it's all the way turned each way man that just looks awesome and guys don't tell me that doesn't look good because if there's one hater on that, I'm going to delete the whole YouTube channel. Now nah, I'm just kidding. But now let's go ahead and do the other side. And then we can start working on the brake lines. Check it out, we got the passenger side done and it turned out just as good as the driver's side. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and start making the brake lines. And I think we're gonna start with the passenger side because we're gonna route this one all the way underneath. I think we are actually just gonna go along the uh, subframe right here instead of going around the firewall. And a lot of cars have it on the subframe. So let's go ahead and start making these brake lines. I was actually just testing out my brake flaring tool right here. This thing was actually pretty cheap, but check out the first flare that I actually made. It actually looks really good. Check that out. It fits perfectly flush right there. So guys, let's go ahead and lift this car up and we're gonna build the first brake line. So we're gonna start off with the passenger brake line. Basically, we're just gonna make a bend that goes up like this and probably goes all the way down here and then it will get bolted down onto the subframe because I really don't want it being across the firewall. I know that might be a little bit cleaner, but honestly, it's super. it would be super easy to like to damage it if we we're taking out the transmission. And I think right here is literally gonna be perfect. So let's grab our brake line and let's build it.
so guys, check it out. We got the brake lines all routed and everything looks pretty good. We also went ahead and just clamped it with these uh, self-tapping screws. I am gonna get something better instead of the self-tapping screws. That was just a perfect way to drill a hole plus mount it up there. And check it out, we got the brake line goes all the way underneath. I will do a little bit more straightening later, but honestly, it looks really good. And then it is clamped onto the subframe down there. And then let's go ahead and check out the passenger side over here. Same thing, super clean. It just goes straight up just like that, goes down and it's not touching the frame rail. It's not touching any metal. And honestly, I think the brake system turned out freaking awesome. The brake lines were a lot harder to bend than I thought, but we made it work. So guys, that's gonna be a wrap for today's video. We've got a lot of work done on the Mustang. Finally, we got the brake lines made. I mean, basically there's really not much left to do in the front area of the suspension. All we're gonna have to do is wait on the proportioning valve so we can finalize all this. And let me know what you guys think in the comment section, what you guys think about how I routed the brake lines. I think they're good, but I know there's a lot of experts out there in the comments. So let me know if you got any suggestions on how I should uh, connect these brake lines to the actual uh, brake booster just go ahead and drop the comments down below but man this thing is coming together check it out we got the steering all hooked up bam we got brake lines made all we're gonna have to do is wait on a couple of the components we need the brake proportioning valve for here and then we'll finalize all that up and i still never got my uh heim joints in order to move the brake pedal over and then we are still waiting on the clutch assembly that is going to be mounted on the floor which kind of sucks it always sucks waiting on parts but you know what guys this thing is coming along quick we got the radiator in there we got pretty much all the front suspension all done next video hopefully we'll have the seats we'll have all the heim joints so we'll be able to finish the clutch pedal the brake pedal and we'll also have the radiator lines and i did go ahead and order some fans i got some slim fans to go in here because we are planning on doing a single turbo instead of a twin turbo because it's gonna be a lot easier especially to like route the exhaust uh, setup and everything like that. So guys, that's a wrap for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also follow us on Instagram at VTune and make sure you stay tuned for the next episode. We should have a lot more goodies in the car, such as the seats. We'll have everything to do the brake system and this thing is almost ready to hit the road. Thanks for watching.